I'm now going to continue my video series on Henry Ward Beecher and his sermons by discussing the topic of beauty. So what is beauty in God's eyes? Well, let me give you a few illustrations. There is a difference between a person who gives a lot and a cheerful giver. What's the difference? Well, you see this all the time. You have a natural disaster, whether it be a flood, a tornado, a landslide, a hurricane, it doesn't matter. And then you see all these atheists. They, they climb in their cars, they climb in their planes, they climb on the trains, they rush right down to the natural disaster area. They lend their hands, no question about it. They raise money for charity, the whole nine yards. You gotta see how fast they empty their wallets. But why are they there? One of the biggest reasons why they're there, it's not the only one, but one of the biggest reasons why they're there is because they want to get praised. That's why they're there. And these poor people who have suffered through this natural disaster don't realize that that's the reason why they're there. They're just so glad that they showed up at all that they're willing to give these people all this praise and gratitude for what these atheists are doing for them. That's not the Christian mentality whatsoever. Let me tell you how the Christian mentality works. Okay. So we got a Christian and he knows this child in need. It's not Christmas time. It's not Thanksgiving. It's not Halloween. There is no particular holiday. This Christian just knows that there's a child in need. Whether it be of clothes, or of a toy, or something like that. So the Christian goes into the store. He's not thinking about coupons. He's not thinking about how much praise he's going to get when he buys this present for this child. All this Christian is thinking about is the sparkle in that little child's eyes once that child receives the present. That's the only motivation he has for buying that present for that child. That's all he's thinking about. So he goes up to the counter. He, he hasn't done this for Black Friday. Okay? He didn't show up on Black Friday. He just showed up on an ordinary summer day. He went in the store. He bought the present. He wasn't looking for the cheapest present. He was looking for the present that that child would be thrilled to have. He was also thinking about what that child would think of him once he gave that child the present. So he's not looking for the cheapest present. He's looking for the present that would bring that child joy. He doesn't care about the price tag. He's not looking for tax deduction. Again, he's not looking for coupons. He's just looking for that present for that child. And he buys it. And he gives it to that child. And he sees the sparkle of that little child's eyes. And that's his only reward. That, in God's definition, is beauty. That's it right there. So you want God's definition of beauty? There it is. See what I mean? Now let's talk about humility. Oh, you see this all the time with the with the with the nuns. I'm not kidding you. Oh, we're humility because we look so impoverished. That's not God's definition. That's their definition, but it's not God's. You want to know what real humility is? Let's say you're on a sports team. You compete against a rival team. They just happen to be better than you. They weren't cheating or anything. They just happen to be better than you. It wasn't that you were deficient in your skills. Your skills were just fine. They just happened to have a better day than you did. So they won. Well, an atheist will go up to the opposing team. They'll shake their hands. They'll tell them congratulations. But under their breath, you're going to hear it. I'm going to fix those guys next year. Oh, I think they cheated a whole nine yards. You hear this if you're paying attention. And if you're not, you should be. But not the Christian. The Christian's mindset is this. Hey, we got to be part of a championship game. We got to be watched by thousands of people. We had a great time. Sure, they were better than us this year. But 
we have to keep in mind that may not be the same team we face next year. Shoot, we may not be the same team we face next year. We may have a completely different team of our own. The results may be different next year. It'll give us something to look forward to next year. It'll give us another 365 days to even improve our team. If we even have to improve it at all. We may not have to improve anything. But again, we might. We might be able to learn something from this other team. Maybe we can incorporate the things we learned from this team into ours. That's right. Your team grows from the experience of facing off with this rival team, which is always a good thing. And you can carry those lessons into real life. See me? God may have put that rival team in your way to motivate you to improve yourself. Which is always a good thing. See what I mean? That's the Christian mindset. They're not mad because the rival team won. They're thinking of all the things that they could do to improve themselves. And, and uh, they're also thinking about, hey, they just were genuinely a better team. They deserve the trophy. And they give them a sincere congratulations because of it. They, they happily admit, hey, they were a better team. They're not upset about it. They're just thrilled about it. They had a good time. They got exposed to thousands of people. Shoot, keep this in mind. Even though your team loses during a championship game, well, hey, there may be scouts in that crowd, in that group of people who are watching you. And those scouts may see your good performance, even though you lose the game, they see your good performance and they may want to put you in an even better team. They may want to promote you or something. You never know. So you may still get something good out of it, even if you don't win the game. You never know. Your whole fate could change, even if you lose the game. See what I mean? And you learn something from the experience. That's always a good thing. That's the Christian mindset. Okay? Now, how about this? There are lots of atheists out there in which if they get verbally insulted, they'll stand there and they, they won't throw a punch back. And people think that these atheists are good because they didn't throw a punch back even when they got insulted. But here's the difference. Many of those atheists will stand there and go, oh, they can't hear me right now, but I'm going to plot revenge on this guy that just insulted me. I'm not going to throw a punch at him today, but by golly, he's going to regret this somehow. I'm going to make sure he regrets this. They didn't throw the punch today, but maybe they'll throw the punch tomorrow when nobody sees anything. Or maybe they'll come up with some kind of a verbal revenge for the people that just insulted them. Either way, see me? Here's the Christian response. The Christian response is this. Hey, I serve God. God decides my destiny. I'm not going to throw a punch against this guy because God has a better plan for me. This guy is not worth my time. I'm done with this guy. I'm going to walk away, not because it's the right thing to do, but it's because God has another plan for me. And I follow God. I don't care what this guy's opinion of me is. I serve God. I'm not here to appease that guy. I'm here to appease God. And so they let it go, and they don't even have a grudge. Now, I bet the first thing you're going to say is, well, Ted, you're not perfect at that. No, I'm not. I never said I was a perfect Christian. There's no such thing as a perfect Christian. There are some people that just, they just forget those little lessons. And I'm not perfect at it. You've seen it myself. I've, I've done things that I'm pretty ashamed of. But that's why God is the God of second chances. He renews his mercies every morning. Ever seen that in the Bible? I know you have. 
That's a tough thing to do. I, I, I can tell you that right now. From personal experience, I can tell you how tough it is to not sit there and go, I'm going to extract some kind of revenge because this guy verbally insulted me. I try not to let that happen. I'm not perfect at it, but I try. So, I'm as guilty of that as anybody else. But the thing is, I'm willing to admit to that. I'm willing to admit to a character flaw. Yes, I have that character flaw myself. And I'm no more right than what I'm telling you. That's why I'm telling you. So that maybe you could avoid the same character flaw that I have. And actually, because I'll probably end up watching myself telling myself this. I'm giving a verbal insult to myself. Isn't that a neat trick? I could actually insult myself. Here I'm not only giving you guys a lesson, but I'm giving a lesson to myself at the same time. There's nobody better on the face of the earth to give a lesson to you than your own self. Yeah, it's better that you slap your own face for being a jerk than having somebody else do it. To look yourself in the eyes and know that you screwed up and you have to admit it even to yourself. You can end up being your own worst enemy because you are teaching you. There's a thought. And believe me, I'll probably be watching this video again just to remind myself of how much of a complete idiot I am sometimes. Wow, what a kicker. Alright, let's go on here. Alright, how about this? Here's another situation. You're in a place of employment. You're up for promotion. So is a, a, a co-worker of yours. Okay? You're up for promotion, but so is that other co-worker. The other co-worker gets the promotion. Now, an atheist would be happy to congratulate the other guy, but under your, but under his breath, you hear it. Well, that guy really didn't deserve that promotion. I hate this guy. I'll never be friends with him again. How dare he get that promotion? He's not going to say that out loud. If you hear him under his breath, you're going to hear this. Christian, on the other hand, knows this. Christian knows two things. One, the co-worker may not be able to handle the promotion that he's getting. So that when that promotion comes up again, you may end up getting it after all. Just because you don't get it the first time doesn't mean you won't get it. Just take a look at Abraham Lincoln. He didn't win all his elections. Check it out. You'll find out. But just because Abraham Lincoln didn't win all his elections doesn't mean he didn't win the biggest one. He became president. Think about that. He wasn't always the winner, but he won the best ones. Now, there is another way it could work. Let's say God gives the promotion to your co-worker. Say everything works out fine. Well, God may transfer you from one place of employment to another place of employment where you may get a promotion that's even better than the one that your co-worker got. So you end up in a situation that's even better than your co-worker. That's how God handles things. God will only put you in a position that he thinks you can handle. If you can't handle it, God's not going to put you in it. Because it's only going to stress you out. It's only going to cause you more problems. only going to cause you more grief. And the more stress you have, the less likely you'll serve God effectively. Think about that. The more stress you have in your life, the less likely you'll serve God the way God wants you to serve Him. Oh. So God may have a very good reason not to let you have that promotion. Sure, it might be better pay, but it may be a more stressful job. And God doesn't want you to experience that much stress. Ever think about that? You may be happier doing the job you are now than you, you would be if you did get the promotion. God's thinking about your well-being. Your mental well-being, your physical well-being, your spiritual well-being. 
God may have a very good, healthy reason for not letting you have a particular promotion. You may not want to be the guy on the top. Sure, it's better pay, but it's also a more stressful job, too. Think about it. Okay. Now the final thing is this. Let's say you do become rich and you're able to handle it. Okay? But being rich doesn't make you a better person. Being smart doesn't make you a better person. And for you to be able to demonstrate that being rich or being smart or being even athletically talented doesn't necessarily make you a better person, that's the mark of a true Christian. Because you're admitting that you only have this ability for a short period of time, for as long as God lets you have that ability. Because you know one day God can take that ability away from you. See what I mean? And yes, there are stories in the Old Testament which shows what God can actually take away from you if you just simply can't handle the talents you have. Let's take a look at Samson for a second. God allowed Delilah to take Samson's strength away to put humility back into Samson's soul. And although Samson didn't recognize it as first, he did figure it out. And he was sincerely sorry for what he did. For what he allowed to happen to him. See what I mean? So, how do you demonstrate? Let's say, let's say you are rich. Let's say you finally make it to the top. You, you've got all the riches in the world. How do you demonstrate that to everybody else that you haven't allowed riches to corrupt you? Well, let's put it to you this way. Let's say you're having a church picnic. And we all know that because you were rich, you probably put a, you probably put more in the uh, what they used to call the kettle. You probably put more money in the kettle to fund this this Sunday dinner than anybody else. But just because you put more funds in it than anybody else, you stand there and you let everybody else get their food before you get yours. That's how you demonstrate it. You're not worried about being first in line. Sure, you've contributed more than anybody else. But, you're not worried about being first in line. Actually, you try to be last in line. That's real humility. See what I mean? To have the, to have the confidence that you're still going to get food, even though you're not first in line. Because God is supplying your needs. And the real reason why you put so much money in the kettle had nothing to do with getting the Sunday dinner, but had something to do with being in fellowship with all those other people. Your real reason for being there was not to eat, but to fellowship. Sure, you had the food, but you were there for fellowship. You may have actually deliberately eaten earlier to keep your stomach full so that you wouldn't worry about the food being served at the Sunday dinner. That way you didn't have to be first in line. You deliberately made an effort not to be first in line. Sure you had the riches, you had the right to be first in line. You contributed the most. But just because you had the right didn't mean you exercised it. See the difference? That's real Christian character. That's what you should strive for. Whew. Talk about a lesson. Let me tell you something. An atheist showing up at a Sunday dinner who has contributed that much will do everything they can to be first in the line because after all they contributed the most. But a real Christian will try to be last in the line because they know God's taking care of their needs. And they aren't there because of the food. They are there because of the fellowship. And fellowship 
is priceless. There's the lesson in God's beauty. Hopefully you'll remember that as you continue your Christian walk. Now did you talk to God today? Did you tell him how thankful you were that you had food in your belly, clothes on your back, a house you were living in, more importantly that you were able to watch me today? You actually had internet access and a tablet and a computer? Did you thank God for any of that? Did you thank God that you had the time to listen to the things I was trying to say to you today? Did you thank God for that? Did you thank God that you actually had a friend that was willing to tell you all this stuff? Did you ever thank God that a friend like me actually took the time to tell you these things? I could have done a million things today, but instead I took the time to tell you all this. Golly, I'm a nice guy, aren't I? But it's not about me. It's the fact that God gave me an opportunity to tell you guys these kind of things. And hopefully improve your Christian character. Wowee! I do have a way with things, don't I? Anyway, like I said, it's not really about me. It's about the fact that God has given you an opportunity to hear these kind of things that maybe you've never heard before. Or maybe you dismissed it on an earlier time, but now you're hearing it for real. Who knows? Anyway, I thank God myself that I had an opportunity not only to tell you all this stuff, but to chasten myself on YouTube. Think about that. I actually took the time to chasten myself on YouTube in front of God and everybody else. And God gave me that opportunity to do that. Today. And you bet you I'll be watching this video again. Not because I'm narcissistic, because I need, I need me to chew me out. The best person to chew me out is me. Because who could better relate to me, aside from God, than me? Yeah, never thought about that, huh? Gee, the guy chases him his own self. Man, that, that's real Christian character. You want real Christian character? Have a Christian chew himself out because he didn't live up to God's standards like he should have. There's real Christian character. Nobody else had to choose chasing this guy. He did it to himself because he knew dang good well he screwed up. And he, he was free to admit it. There is a real Christian characteristic to say, Hey man, I screwed up and I admit it. Before God and everybody else. Do I have some problems with ego? You betcha I do. Am I ashamed of it? Yes, I am. Sometimes I let my ego get the best of me. And it really makes me feel bad because I probably hurt feelings that I probably shouldn't hurt. But I'm only human. That doesn't mean I shouldn't correct myself. I'm just saying I'm only human. And I will be correcting myself. And like I said, I'll probably be watching this video again, correcting myself one more time. There's no better person in the world to slap you in the face other than God and yourself. Okay. Anyway, I'll just kind of conclude this for now. We've all had a bunch of fun. I mean, what better fun can you have than watching a guy correct himself? <laughs> There's fun. Anyway, I will tell you more in a future video, so I want you to stay tuned.